Hi everyone, my name is Yi Zhu. Today I want to talk about my paper cooperating with Celine. The paper is about decolonization of past and present identities, a discussion on the representations of Britishness and otherness in UK museums. I divide it into five parts. First, about background and research questions. It is important to understand the implications of the heritage sector beyond its aesthetic sphere, as it is vital to examine the political motivations behind it and the impact it might produce. In this direction, museums play a key role not only as a repository of heritage, but as means to build and reinforce identities and to portray narratives about it which reflect their political scenario. The way in which pieces from foreign countries were historically displayed in Britain cultural institutions was determined not only by its aesthetical characteristics, but also its purpose to build an idea of the foreign, consequently constructing what would be considered national. In most of the largest British museums, the identities, narratives, and objects from countries of the global south have for long been displayed as exotic elements to incur surprise, amusement, and estrangement in British elite audience. And let's go further about two questions. First, how British museums build national identities and ideas of otherness? Second, how to decolonize museums under the background of multiculturalism? Part two, abstract. In this article, we analyze the role of museums in building national identities and in including migrant perspectives in this process, with a focus on the United Kingdom case. We briefly examine how ideas of otherness and foreignness were built in British museums, especially through the narratives around the objects from its former colonies and the narratives about migrant influences on contemporary UK culture. We then relate this process with the recent decolonization movements and suggest that decolonization, decolonizing British museums should not only revise the narratives about its colonial past, but also revise the representation of current migrants and minority identities. Part 3 Methodology Due to the special conditions this year, many places were not accessible to us, so we mainly used literature review. At first, we made a list of keywords and searched for re relevant papers. Then, we perused and analyzed them from diverse perspectives, discussing together and exchanging our minds. Part 4 Essentials it can be briefly divided into two parts according to the two questions. First, how British museums build national identities and ideas of otherness? Let's see the evolution of the role of museums in building British nationality. In the beginning, there are only a few elite private collections using rising in the UK, which only served for the upper class. Later, shifts towards open public free museums emerged so that objects could, could be not merely locked away but observed and studied by the general public. Museums at that time, the post-war the post period, started to represent broader voices beyond the elite, such as workers, migrants, and communities. But meanwhile, they constructed a collective memory in line with the leading power groups, with exhibitions consisting mostly of objects of the upper class. Given that, rather than simply collecting and preserving memory, museums were mainly selecting memory. In the late 90s, ethnography in museums emerged describing material culture of global South nations regarded as primitive. 
The government constantly underlines the post glories to reinforce the British identity, with art crafts and objects from this colonization period often exhibited without adequate interpretation from the perspective of their original context, thus hindering a full understanding of their actual meaning and potentials. Nevertheless, in 1957, the British Museum first recording and exhibiting oral narratives came out, appealing more attention to migrant heritage. With this growing working class of British and migrant workers in post-war UK, many museums around the UK started to give more space for folk culture and the lives and aspirations of other social classes. Within this process, migrant heritage started to receive more attention in museums and cultural centers. With local exhibitions addressing migrant cultures in the 1970s and 1980s, museums also started to be seen as a place to learn about culture, curiosities, and scientific topics, attracting a more varied audience. The selection Criteria started to include more plural narratives and portraits of individuals and communities. Then, while this process still lacked a connection between migrants and the historical objects of their places of origin, with the influence of multiculturalism and migrant diversity in on UK contemporary identity, a kind of creative interactive approach appeared, employing digital technologies to create an engaging experience with the public, allowing their own knowledge system to be constructed and renewed as proactive learners rather than passive recipients. Following this line, several museums in Britain prom promote initiatives related to migrant identities, ranging from exhibitions to workshops, from face-to-face -face activities to online interactions. And let's move on to another question. How to decolonize museums under the background of multiculturalism? Opinions on the influence of multiculturalism on British identity varied. Someone believes that it could stimulate ethnic and cultural fragmentations that erode the common foundation of the national identity, while others claim that multiculturalism can actually be compatible with the construction of a national identity, as it can avoid contentions that could emerge from forced assim assimilation of minority groups allowing the preservation and development of minorities, ethnic, and cultural conventions. Despite policy efforts to create a common national identity built by multiple cultures, many groups in Britain are still subjected to discrimination in political, economic, ethnic, and social terms. Such discrimination is detrimental to the idea of national identity, as it hinders the construction of a sense of integration and belonging. Given this scenario, museums as public educational institutions need to take actions to make a difference and to be decolonized. For one thing, it can also play a role to boost the representation of marginalized migrant groups and minorities as a crucial part of the national history and present story of the country. These integration efforts should be done not only in portraying these groups as exhibition protagonists, but also engaging them as frequent and loyal audience, such as to access museums more easily from marginalized areas like enhancing public transportations and holding longer hours exhibitions for people who leave work late, creating friendly environments for children, and sharing information with an accessible vocabulary and format, and so on. 
for another to redress the sources of foreign pieces and the methods with which they had been obtained, and establish dialogues and agreements with the countries from which these pieces have been taken, ranging from repatriation, co-exhibition to 3D repatriation. Still, this is not enough to address the difficulties faced by these countries to maintain tangible cultural heritage. A more, ex a more ex effective initiative in this direction could be to partner up with the commu community where the pieces were taken from, namely physically repatriating the piece, but also collaborating with local staff for knowledge sharing about heritage preservation. Additionally, it is crucial for museums to be more embedded in their communities, providing spaces for community voices to be heard and considered. Besides, attention should be paid to the use of the word heritage and the word culture, as heritage is often associated with the past and therefore might resonate to audience as a matter of previous generations, whereas it is an effort that concerns audience nowadays too. And the use of the word culture might be preferred in some contexts, as it invokes a more present and current subjectiveness, and therefore might highlight the present impacts and duties of the public. Finally, conclusion. Decolonizing museums requires all future generations' efforts and engage with minority groups related to these countries more proactively to go beyond the tangible sphere of art crafts to and embracing the intangible dimension of narratives from communities creating this art. And that's all. Thank you.